Hi, I'm Bonnie Barker with BonnieBayCrochet.com and today I want to show you how to crochet his and her mug hugs. These are very easy to make. They crochet it very quickly and they can be made from using the stash yarn that you have on hand. It doesn't take that much yarn to make these at all. And they make really great gift giving ideas for the holidays and other times of the year as well. Um, the pattern for this was originally published in Crochet World's December 2019 um, edition. And um, this is available both on newsstands um, while I've, I'm filming this now, but um, later on it will be available from Annie. So any of that information that you need is in the video description below if you wanted to get a copy of the uh, written pattern for this project. One more thing, if you could just go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of the new offerings and the notification bell will also guarantee that you don't miss the notifications. And if you hit the thumbs up, if you like the project, that would really encourage my heart. Well, let me go ahead and show you what you need. Recommended yarn for this project is the Caron Simply Soft in Tweeds. And there are a couple of different colors here. This is off-white color. This is a worsted weight yarn, or a number four. Let me go ahead and show you that, a number four weight yarn. Um, another possible color that was used in the sample is the gray heather. Again, these are both number four worsted weight yarns. For the crochet hook, I am recommending a size H or eight or 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. And as always, if you could have that yarn needle and a pair of sharp scissors handy, that will be great. Let's go ahead and start. You're also going to need a button to go with these mug hugs and just choose any button that you think will look great with your yarn choice. We're gonna start with our slip knot. And do make sure that you leave a nice tail so that you can easily weave that in using the yarn needle. We're gonna start with chaining 12. Okay, so I should have 12 chains. After that, we're gonna start by working a double crochet in the fourth chain from hook. So one, two, three, four. We're gonna start there. And we're gonna work a double crochet in each of those chains. Okay, at the end of this row, you should have nine double crochets plus the turning chain, which also counts as a double crochet. So in total, we should have 10 double crochets. Go ahead and turn. And we are going to chain three, one, two, three, to begin our Celtic weave rows. Now we're going to show you how to work rows one and two of the Celtic weave and then that's what we're going to repeat a total of nine times to establish this pattern. Okay, we're going to wrap our hook twice because we're getting ready for a front post treble. We're going to skip the first stitch here and we're going to skip the next two stitches as well. In the next stitch we're going to work a front post treble and if you've never worked a post stitch, you don't work it through the top loops like you do normally, but you're going to give this stitch a belt. We bring the hook around the stitch, kind of wrap it around it, and then we complete our treble crochet the way we normally would. Okay, we're gonna do that once there and then once in the next stitch. like that. Now working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped right here. So we come around. And we do that again. Okay. Now we're going to do that one more time. We're going to skip the next two stitches. One, two, and we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. And then working in front 
of those last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Make sure I go through all of the strands. Okay, so let me show you so far what you should have. At the end of the row, we are going to work in this chain three space. We're going to work a double crochet just right in that big opening there. Okay, now after row number one of the Celtic weave, which is row number two of the project. I hope that's not too confusing. We're ready to begin the Celtic weave row with the back side facing us. This is actually row three of the project, but in the written pattern, it's row two of the Celtic weave stitch. I hope that's not confusing. There are just two rows for this stitch. We're going to chain three. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to work back post treble crochets over the first two stitches. These are the two stitches that were crossed in the last row. And then another back post treble crochet. It's worked. Um, the back post treble is similar to the front post, except if you noticed, I came in through the back side of, this, of the um, fabric rather than from the front side. Okay, after we do those first two back post trebles, we're going to skip the next two stitches. We're going to back post treble in the next two stitches. This is, by the way, an intermediate stitch. Uh, if you're brand new to crocheting, I have many other projects on my channel that would actually suit you better than this one. Um, this project does assume a certain amount of um, crochet skill, um, and this is probably not the best one to start with, but if you are a confident beginner and have done some of my other projects, by all means, give it a try and jump in. Okay, so after those last two stitches we just worked, we're going to work in front of these stitches as seen from the back side. So what we're going to do is we're going to work back post trebles around these two stitches here, and I do use the the um, neurons in my tall man and thumbkin fingers to tell me where the hook goes. So if we look at the front side facing, okay, I'm going to bring my hook around here. This is probably the trickiest part of this. And we work that back post treble over those two stitches that were skipped. And then after that, we do back post trebles and the next two stitches which haven't been worked which are these last two stitches here and then a double crochet in the chain three okay and we turn and this is what you should have now for the rest of the next um, for rows 1 through 18 we're going to work one rows one and two of the Celtic weave pattern again and again. So I'll go ahead and work this for you for two more rows so there's no confusion. Okay, so I, I chain two. I should chain three at the beginning of this row. Skip these next two stitches here. And we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches. Working in front of these last two stitches, we're going to front post treble in the two stitches that we skipped. Notice that I did not, I'm sorry, did not use this stitch. We're not working in the very first stitch of the row. Okay, now we're going to do that again. Skip the next two stitches, which are kind of hidden. They're back here. And then we're going to front post treble in the next two stitches here. And working in front of these two stitches, we are going to front post treble in the two stitches here. Now they're a little bit hidden. I can feel them quite nicely with my fingers or my finger and my thumb. So go ahead and front post treble there and in the next one.
once we finish this row and the next you'll clearly see the pattern and then a double crochet in that chain three turning chain and this is what I'll go ahead and pull that up a little bit this is what we have now so you're starting to see this um, cabling come about now we're going to turn chain three one two three this is a repeat of row two of the Celtic weave again we're not using this first stitch we start by doing two back post trebles right off the bat there and now we skip the next two stitches here one two and then the next two stitches we work back post trebles now working in front of these two stitches as seen from the front side we're going to bring our hook around to the stitch right here this is one of those stitches that is much easier to teach sitting next to a friend than watching on a video but I'm hoping to do this slowly enough and show you where these these stitches go that's really the most important thing okay now we just do two more back post trebles over these two stitches here and that's one more thing I like to tell people um, who are watching my videos because it's easy for me to get carried away with the speed um, unintentionally of course but if you need to slow this video down at all right down here for the right-handed over here on the left-handed videos there's a little gear icon if you just click that you can actually select the playback speed you can slow it to half speed or even a quarter of speed if you'd like if you're watching from a cell phone the three vertical dots right up here be on this side for your left-handed videos um, if you click that it does the same thing you can change this playback speed and that goes not just for my videos but any of the videos on YouTube okay so we get to the end of this row and we work a double crochet let's go ahead and turn and see the pattern is already established so all we do now is we do this for the width or, or the length rather of our cup cozy so I have finished one two three four five rows so if you continue this through row 18 and then I will show you how to finish off with the edging so after completing the foundation row plus rows 1 through 18 of the Celtic weave this is what you should have now I'm going to finish this one off in the cozy number two style of edging and then I'll come back and I will show you the other edging style that you can choose okay for row number 19 we're going to chain three and then we're going to work front post double crochet starting in that second stitch and we're going to work that all the way across the row make sure you pull through all the loops okay at the end of this row I want you to leave the chain three unworked because now we're going to work the buttonhole for this cup cozy and we are going to chain one after we've turned and we are going to single crochet in each stitch across and we're also going to work a single crochet in that chain three space so you should have nine single crochets across now we're going to turn we're going to chain one and this is where we're going to make our buttonhole we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches one two three now we're going to chain six one two three four five six and then after that we are going to skip the next three stitches one two three and you guessed it we're going to single crochet in the next three one two three okay so we have a little loop made but we're not done yet we're going to um, finish off here so now we're going to turn 
After we turn, we're going to chain one and we're going to work one single crochet in the next three single crochets or stitches. Okay, now we get to the chain six, which is our button hole. We're going to go ahead and single crochet eight single crochets right in that space. So that's four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then after that, we are going to single crochet in the next three stitches. One, two, three. Now the pattern does say the right side facing, but it really doesn't matter if the right or the wrong side is facing. It's going to be beautiful either way. But this would be actually a good time for you to make sure that your button that you are going to attach will fit. I believe this is the button I'm going to use, and that fits very nicely. Now, if you're going to use a smaller button, I have a solution for you. Just crochet um, fewer, leave fewer stitches available here. You may want to go down to just having two available here and maybe make this loop smaller. You can even bring it down to maybe four chains and maybe even, you know, maybe four single crochets here if you want it to be a smaller button and you want that loop to fit more tightly. So this is very much adjustable according to your needs. Okay, now we're going to continue the edging. We're going to chain one and we're going to be working alongside the, the rows as we go along. Now we're beginning to work along the row ends and we're going to be working the shell stitch. So what we're going to do is we are going to work a single crochet in this stitch right here, which is the first of the, of the rows. We're going to skip the next row and in this next space we're going to work six double crochets. That's three, four, five, and six. All worked in that same space. Now we're going to skip the next row end, which is right here, and we're going to single crochet in the next row end, just like that, and that's going to help pull that shell down for us. We're going to skip the next row end, and in the next row end, we're going to work six double crochets. And this is going to be the repeat all the way down the side. Okay, let's make sure I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I do. Skip the next row end, single crochet, and that next row end. Skip the next row end, and then single crochet and the next row end. And that should be six. It is. And let me show you what it's going to look like from the other side. Isn't that nice? So it's going to be very nice and decorative. And I'm going to go ahead and finish down doing this down the side and then I'll show you what to do when we get to the end. Okay, we do this all the way across. You should have five shells. One, two, three, four, five. And in that last space right here, we're going to work one more. I know it's a little bit closer, but that's okay. So go ahead and work those six double crochets in that row end. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're ready to work across the foundation chain where we first started. Okay, in order to do this, we're going to single crochet in each stitch across, working in what's left of that chain, and I'm actually going to work over this strand at the same time to try to hide that strand into my work. So as I've worked across each of those chains, now I'm going to try to make this match this other side and I'm going to go ahead and work six double crochets or a shell into that first 
row going the opposite direction, working in those row ends. four, five, and six. And so we want to match this as best we can. So we worked a single crochet in this next row in. So let's go ahead and work a single crochet there. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and trim this thread right here because we've crocheted over it quite a bit and I think it's very well hidden. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then we're going to skip the next row and the next row in, which is opposite where this other shell was. Let's go ahead and work another shell. Six double crochets. Forgive me for, for going so quickly. I just know you know how to do a double crochet at this stage. You don't need me to you know slow that down too much for you. Skip the next row end and then the next row end we work a single crochet and notice that it is matching up evenly. We want this to be symmetrical as we go along. And I would even suggest if you have to even vary slightly from the actual written pattern to get the symmetry, do it. You are in charge of this. This is your project. Okay, so now we skip the next row end and then this row end, which is opposite where this shell was crocheted, go ahead and make your next shell there and so on and so forth. So go ahead and finish these all the way across these row ends. Okay, after we've worked these shells all the way across, we're going to join with a slip stitch to that first single crochet and slip stitch. Go ahead and give it a chain, give it a tug, and let's go ahead and clip a generous strand so that we can hide this and secure it. Let's turn around and look at what we have. Isn't that nice? Well, let's go ahead and let me show you how to hide that one loose strand. We had another loose strand down here, but we crocheted over that. So that's one less strand to hide. And that always makes me happy. <laughs> I'm not much of a sewer, so I, I uh, don't enjoy hiding loose strands, but it is, you know, it's like doing dishes. It's just part of, part of what you got to do. And the quicker you do them, the better, which is why I like using my yarn needle here. So let's go ahead and bring this down. And let me show you, this is very easy. Let's go ahead and bring it into another stitch. So this is well hidden. And you can run it under these threads here. Actually, I'm going to go a little bit further down. Bring it down here. There, there's no rules to this. It's just a matter of hiding them efficiently. That's the goal. So I'm going to get it under these single crochets. I'm going to just do this all the way across. And with this um, type of yarn, it's going to be very easy to hide this strand. I also just want to mention that, you know, if you don't have this yarn on hand, don't worry about that. Um, these are small enough. You can make these out of you know, any yarn that you have in your stash for that matter. I'm going to go ahead and drop that needle and clip this carefully so that I don't clip any of the strands. I don't like the way that looks. I'll go ahead and clip that off too. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do, we're not totally done yet. We do need to hide, or, or rather we need to sew on a button. And I thought this button would look lovely on this fabric. So let me go ahead and get my needle and thread so I can do this. Okay, so now that I have my needle and my thread, I am simply going to sew, sew this button into place, just like you normally would a button. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this into place and then I'll show you what I have. So now my button is secure in place. I can easily use this as my cup cozy. Well, let me show you how to do cup cozy number one finishing. So after working those front post double crochets all the way across, just like we ended um, with the other cup cozy, we're going to turn to work along the edges. 
we're going to go ahead and chain one and then in that very first row end work a single crochet chain three and a double crochet we're going to work this in every row end the next row end single crochet chain three and a double crochet and the next row end and actually in each row end across single crochet chain three and a double crochet so we're going to work that all the way down the side so after working this all along the edge and in that turning chain we're going to go ahead and work single crochets just like we did with the first one in that foundation chain and if you're not sure where to put the hook it's opposite the stitch right there and you can go ahead and work over both of those remaining loops of the turning chain or, or rather of the foundation chain okay so once we've worked those whoops I'll go ahead and do that all the way across that row now we're going to begin working along the row ends of the other side of the cup cozy and I'm actually going to work over this thread a little bit as I go to try to secure it so for that first row end we work a single crochet chain three and a double crochet and in the next space single crochet chain three and a double crochet and then the next row end single crochet chain three and a double crochet so we're going to work that all the way down the other side after working this all the way down the other side and in the turning chain go ahead and single crochet in each stitch across you go ahead and work that next single crochet in that space of that single crochet right there so you should have a total of nine single crochets across now we're going to turn chain one and we're going to make the buttonhole just like we did with the other cup cozy we're going to single crochet in the first three stitches then we're going to chain six one two three four five six skip three stitches one two three and then single crochet in those next three stitches okay and then we're going to turn again we're going to chain one and we're going to single crochet in those three stitches one two Three, and now we're going to work eight single crochets in this chain six it's one two three four should we pull through all of those strands five six seven and eight and then single crochet in the next three stitches one two three and we are finished all we need to do now we need to fasten off give it a chain give it a tug and then cut our strand and go ahead and pull it all the way through make sure that is secure and you guessed it we need to hide this loose thread so once we've threaded our needle we're just going to go ahead and bring it down into our work to be hidden again bring that down a couple rows down below and just run it under these single crochets let's go ahead and bring it down another row There's a lot more stitches to hide it under down here it's nice with this tweed look it really does make it easier to hide these threads so, I think so once we go ahead and pull this on through give it a tug back 
Go ahead and clip it very, very carefully. Make sure that you're not clipping your stitches. And I think we are almost done. Now I'm going to be putting a different size button on this one. I'm going to use this larger button. And one thing that's cool about this is the holes are large enough for me to use yarn. So instead of using, um, using the thread, I'm actually going to use a piece of yarn and I think this is going to be nice. I'm going to go ahead and actually I'm going to knot it up here so that I can hide the thread better. I'm going to make a larger knot. This is so I can anchor this. So I just wanted to show this to you all because, um, you know, if you've got a yarn needle and yarn already, you don't need to be, you know, hunting for thread and uh, straining your eyes on those little needles. So go ahead and, okay, I'm having trouble with my yarn falling out of the needle today, so I had to re-thread that and I bring it through. And let me show you how you can secure this. Um, I like to kind of run it through, you know, a couple of the fibers here. I'll split the yarn just like that and pull it back and just a couple times through. And I think this is going to be secured. It's two, almost lost the thread again. And I think three is going to hold it just fine. Go. And now I'm going to tie this off. And do that again. I'm going to clip it, leaving a nice long thread. And then I am going to just simply thread these into my yarn needle and hide these in the back side of the stitches. So now my other cup cozy is ready to go. And notice how that buttonhole secures quite nicely around that size button. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video making these his and her mug hugs. If you did, if you could give me a thumbs up, that would be great, it would really bless me. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any of the new offerings that I have coming your way. And I do have a lot of fun stuff lined up you're not going to want to miss. God bless. Bye-bye.